Welcome to a Q&A with me and my dog Aries. I thought it would be fun to do a Q&A on this channel since I just started it this year in 2023. I do have a second YouTube channel, my main YouTube channel that I've had since 2015 where I do talk about mostly beauty over there. Um, but when I started this channel this year to focus on healthy habits and just a healthy lifestyle uh, routine and all of that, I thought it would be nice to do a Q&A, let you get to know me a little bit more over here as well and to answer any questions you might have on routines, healthy habits, lifestyle, um, but even some more personal topics. I have been through a divorce and a pretty significant move and obviously all of that affects your day-to-day -day life and how you get into a new routine and develop new habits. So I asked on my Instagram, which is March Beauty Word, what questions you might have for me. So we're going to go through those now. Oh, you're such a big helper. So thank you to everyone who sent in a question. If you haven't met my dog Aries in any of my vlogs, um, she is a Vishla and she thinks she's a small dog. She thinks she's a lap dog. So she's just going to sit on my lap and, and enjoy. Uh, so let's see this question here is how to set and achieve financial goals without feeling like you are depriving yourself. That is a great question. So how to set and achieve financial goals. So one of the biggest things that I think helped me financially was tracking what I was actually doing. I have spoken quite in depth on my main YouTube channel about finances because actually starting a YouTube channel put me into a significant amount of debt. The you know equipment that I needed to put into it, but also how much makeup I was buying to be trying to keep up with all of the beauty channels at the time of you know 2015 to like 2018 i was buying hundreds and then thousands of dollars worth of makeup to be able to put into my channel where i wasn't making anywhere near that amount of money so i very quickly got into debt and had to figure out what to do about it and at this time i was married so what we did was we tracked our finances we made spreadsheets of what we were spending on like bill wise what we absolutely had to spend money on and then we just took some time and we wrote down and tracked everything that we were then spending our money on like all of the times we would go out to eat i definitely think that that was very eye-opening uh, and it's funny to look back and see that that was kind of how we first tackled the problem because i just did a video about this and the more that i thought about my life and the situations that i've gone through and how i've gotten through them it's always kind of first come back to actually being able to pinpoint the problem areas or just to be able to get an outlook of what things look like for me um, but i can remember because even one of my old laptops i still had that spreadsheet saved on there that just said our finances and we were trying to figure out what the heck was going on so again, I have that full video on it, it, you know, now it was mostly on tracking your habits, like your morning routine and your night routine and how to incorporate more healthy habits and what you can change. But I think that goes for a lot of things, of finances included. You first want to get a really good outlook on what it is you're spending your money on and how much money it is that you are bringing in. And not just having like a vague idea and not just having in your head like, well, every two weeks I make this much money. No, put everything down. I said that when I talked about tracking healthy habits of write down all of the little things that you do throughout the day. Even if you just go on your phone for 10 minutes at a time and you might think, well, 10 minutes isn't a significant deal. How many 10 minutes of your day did you spend on your phone that you accumulate all of that together? So I think tracking every little thing like i i still keep these spreadsheets for myself and i track literally everything i spend my money on and everything that i bring in i had to pay 24 cents the other day 24 cents and you bet you that went down in my spreadsheet because it all counts it all matters so i think tracking will help give you a better idea of what you can realistically budget this is something that i've been talking about in the healthy habits community challenge and one of my journal prompts that i gave recently was when you're setting your goals what you need to be realistic about um, because i said the biggest thing that was holding me back from launching my own business was my finances they were in far too much of a mess for me to be able to launch my own brand to put up the money that needs to go into that to buy the inventory the website etc 
Um, so when I said my goal is I want to launch my own business, what did I need to be realistic about? I needed to be realistic about my finances and being able to make more money and save more money in order to be able to do that. So if you can look at what you're bringing in, what you're bringing out over a month, two months, three months to give you a really good idea of what your financial situation actually looks like, then you can create a realistic budget for yourself. And when it comes to not feeling like you're depriving yourself, that can be something that can be very challenging because I remember during that time, I wasn't able to buy all of the new makeup releases, which felt like I was depriving myself. We weren't going out to eat, which then felt like depriving myself. Like I was going back to eating ramen noodles and hot dogs every single night. So uh, when it comes to that feeling, I think what I would say is that it's a mindset shift that you have to tell yourself of even if you have to scale back on certain things that you really love, that it doesn't have to be forever. Um, and this is something that I think about a lot when it comes to my health struggles, which I've spoken about a bit on this channel as well. I was recently diagnosed with adrenal PCOS, extreme inflammation, I had an E. coli infection, um, just a severe hormone imbalance from my years of birth control, infertility treatments, all of that. And I have done like a 30 day elimination diet and I had to keep reminding myself during the time of like, this isn't going to be forever. This, it's not gonna be this way forever and you're doing this for a reason. And I feel like, especially towards the end of those 30 days where like, I felt like I wasn't eating anything. I felt like I couldn't go anywhere because I would have too much temptation around food. Uh, I, I just had to keep saying to myself that I'm doing this for a reason. There's a bigger purpose at play here and it's not going to be this way forever. Even when it came to finances, there are certain times where you have to buckle down. There are certain times where you need to be putting more in savings, where you need not to be spending as much money, but it doesn't mean it has to be that way forever. And if during that time, when you are tracking and you're setting your realistic goals and you're making a plan of how you can go after those goals and you make that into a lifestyle change, hopefully what will happen then is going forward, you will have a better financial outlook. That's something that I was able to turn around for myself. It took a while. I mean, it wasn't something that happened overnight, um, but actually being able to see everything, to see the breakdown, to make those goals, and then to be able to understand how I could achieve them, that's when I was able to start to turn my financial situation around. This next one is on finances as well, if you want, any sort of videos, um, content for me on this channel, always please do just let me know. But if you want like a f more financial based video, I have one on my main channel that I can link was my seven biggest financial mistakes. So I'll link that, but this is a great question too. So curious about how you balance saving and spending, retirement, HSA, etc. So my spreadsheet that I have, I have in Excel, <laughs> I have a spreadsheet where I mark down every single thing that I spent that is like a bill or something that always comes up every single month, even something as small as my editing software. Um, you know, I pay for like we transfer to be able to send files back and forth to my video editor, all of that, my mortgage, cell phone bill. Then I have a spot for when whatever I'm just paying for going out to eat, um, if I do any shopping, my Amazon orders, all of that goes in another column. And then I have a column for my income as well. So I can track every single month how much I am bringing in versus how much I am spending. And I do this every single week. I go through all of my finances every single week and I look at it and I see where I'm at. And then also in Excel, you know, on the bottom, tab two, I have my goals. And I have my goals broken down into what I want to contribute to my stock market accounts, like I have a Fidelity account, I have what I want to contribute to my high yield savings account, which I have through Marcus Goldman Sachs. I have a referral link through them. Everyone gets a referral link through Marcus Goldman Sachs, but if you sign up through the link, you get an extra, you get an extra point for like three months at a time. So I recommended that in my financial video. So I have a goal for that. I have a goal for my um, my Roth IRA, because you can contribute up to a certain amount every single year. Um, so I have all of these different goals, and then I always have some sort of debt goal as well, whether it be I'm still paying student loans, um, I have a Target credit card, and then I have a business credit card, and I have a car payment. 
So all of those things um, I will go through and I will decide what I need my goal to be. Is it paying you know, down my target card, my business card, paying more towards my car or towards my student loans? And this is something that I also look at every single month and I decide what my goals are gonna be. Sometimes it's you know, contributing 500 or $1,000 to my high yield savings that month and that's, that's my goal. Sometimes I want to contribute to several things all within that month. It just depends on my personal situation and what I feel comfortable with, but every single month I do also mark down those goals. And for me, it's really beneficial to have it written down and to have it there. So I'm not just saying in my mind, oh, this month I was gonna put an extra payment down on my car because I might forget it. Or I might just you know write on a sticky note, like pay an extra student loan payment. I might forget that. And it's also really nice for me because I can see throughout the year, I keep them by the year. So I can see in January, this is what my focus was, was savings. Uh, in February, my focus was paying down debt. In March, my focus is going to be uh, stocks, uh, that sort of thing. So I can break it down and I can see, and that way I can balance it out for me. So that way I'm not just too focused on savings, but then I forget about the debts that I also have. So that's personally how I do it. Again, I'm, I'm just so huge in writing everything down. And for me, vi visualizing works so much better. And then again, that way I can also see through every single month how I'm doing. I love this question. How many books do you read per month? <laughs> um, I don't know. So let me think. Um, I, I probably anywhere between like five to seven books a month, I would say. So I'm actually also a book blogger. I wear many hats, but I started on social media in 2009 as a blogger. And my blog, which is still around, is called Chiclet Plus, and I still do book reviews over there. So that was how I started, and I started blogging about books I was reading, makeup I was trying, recipes I was testing out um, fitness journeys. I blogged my first 5K. I reviewed like Jillian Michaels 30 Day Shred. <laughs> and then uh, from there, you know, it just kind of kept going. I was given some really cool opportunities as a book blogger uh, to interview Jackie Collins, to interview Emily Giffen, which was really exciting for me. And then just to be able to get books. I mean, as a book lover, all of a sudden be getting books sent to you to read was like, this is the greatest Thing ever you know and I still do it I'm also a published author of nine novels I'm currently writing my 10th novel all of my books are available on Amazon and also my website by Samantha March uh, but also starting the blog was a big big way for hopefully to meet people in the publishing industry to be able to publish my own books one day and I'm now an author of nine so the Strava Queen caught me off guard looking at the viewfinder, but I'd say I probably read about five to seven because I do have, um, you know, deadlines for book reviews and that sort of thing. And you want to review the books as close as you can to the launch days and all of that. So book reviews are so helpful to authors. If you have read any of my books and you could leave reviews on my website or Amazon, Amazon is so important for book reviews because it really helps with the algorithm and suggesting your books. So Book reviews are so important. I do all of mine on chicoletplus.com. This next question is, how do I train myself to get up earlier to be more productive? Your girl is struggling. I totally relate to that. I was never a morning person. Um, I was someone who I would, I would work until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I would sleep until 9, 10, 11. Um, and I just always said like, that's fine. Like, and it is fine if you're a night owl and that's what you want and that works for you, then that's great. But if you do want to be a morning person and you do want to have a morning routine, um, that's fine too. And, and if you want to make that change, then that's great. I say with morning routines is to also look at your night routine because the biggest thing that I hear and like what I've been hearing in the community challenge is those who struggle with getting up in the morning and being productive in the morning do not sleep well at night and they stay up too late they can't fall asleep um, they wake up consistently throughout the night and i used to be the same way i always used to say i just can't sleep i just can't sleep it took me a long time to be able to get a night routine down um, but i think that really helped my morning routine but when it does come to the morning i started waking up five minutes earlier and it really wasn't adding a lot 
to my routine besides just getting up five minutes earlier but once i was able to master that then i moved it to 10 minutes earlier again still not really doing a whole lot extra in my morning routine but i was just gradually getting used to waking up earlier and waking up earlier until i was able to wake up 20 minutes earlier and then i was able to spend either more time on my skincare or i was able to read a little bit or um, do a little bit of cleaning in the kitchen and then i was waking up 45 minutes earlier and i was able to make a coffee or sit outside with my dog um, and then I eventually started waking up. Now I'm up around 6, 6.30, and I try not to go into my home office until around nine. So now when I get up, I do skincare, I do journaling, I make breakfast, I work out, I go for a walk. I try to do a little bit of cleaning each morning, uh, but I truly started at five minutes earlier. And you just have to get used to it. The biggest thing with making changes, I think, is it, to me is doing it slowly. So I even relate this to food and I think about how I was able to change my diet and it was so small like the things that I was doing was just tiny little changes but then once you get those down then you're like okay now I can try another change or I can incorporate something else or I can take it further and that's kind of what I thought with the morning routine you might think it's silly like five minutes what's that gonna do not much but it gets you started and then once you get that down to go to 10 minutes what's that gonna do not much but you're on a path now and then go to 15 then go to 20 or 25 um, and you just keep building up from there but i would say to also look at your night routine um do you watch a lot of tv at night that was something i did cutting out tv at night was very hard for me i went to literally just one night a week <laughs> saying no to tv and then i went to tune again you, you just I, I think we live in a society where we want things to happen right now and we want big changes to happen right away I just don't see that as being very realistic and I also don't see it as being very sustainable because I feel like you're more apt to burn out or become very unhappy when you start to do things slowly over time it's kind of like before you even realize it you're in a new routine and a new lifestyle is building from there this next question is how do you stay motivated with diet and exercise or is a constant cycle of pausing and restarting uh, I will say for me, health has always been a really big deal to me. I was told I had high cortisol when I was a senior in high school, and for some that might not seem like the biggest deal. For me, I was scared. Um, you know, we have history of heart disease in the family, and I just thought, like, I can't, like, I, I need to be healthy. This is when I first discovered Pilates. I would go to Blockbuster Black and rent Pilates DVDs and do them at home. I started walking every single night with my mom. I cut out soda for an entire year. I cut out fast food my entire senior year, the rest of my senior year. Um, and I started eating foods that were supposed to help lower the cholesterol. Like I was very, very serious. And again, I was like 17, 18 years old. And I was like, this will not be happening. And I got my, my uh, cholesterol under control. I'm currently battling high cortisol. Um, so for me, I think health just is my biggest motivator so i've always been a little bit more on the health conscious side i first got on instagram as a yoga page um, and i've always kind of talked about health and i've always incorporated healthy habits even into my beauty channel videos um, but when you mentioned is it pausing and restarting i have a video on this channel where i explain what i call two a days i feel like i should come up with a better name for it but it's just always what i've use the term as or i won't go more than two days not doing a good habit or more than two days doing a bad habit so i used to be very much into starbucks i'm like day 12 or 13 of not having starbucks but when i decided to try to incorporate this two a day schedule i said okay i can't have starbucks more than two days in a row i can have it monday tuesday but not wednesday and then i can have it thursday or I can have it Monday, if I skip Tuesday, I can have it Wednesday, Thursday, but skip Friday. That just kind of helped put me in a path of like, oh, I've skipped it for a day, like I can skip it for another day. Now I've skipped it for two days, I could skip it for three days. And it just kind of set me up for a good pattern. Or like when it comes to my workouts, um, you know, say I wanna take Saturday, Sunday off, okay, sure, but then I'm gonna be working out Monday. And then, you know, say I work out Monday, Tuesday, but I have a ton of appointments on Wednesday and I just can't get to my workout, no big deal. I'll just pick it up on Thursday. Or even if I can't get to it on Thursday, I'll pick it up on Friday because now I'm not going more than two days. And to me, I hear people talk about eating clean every single day and working out every single day. And it just is not, to me, it's not setting yourself up 
to be realistic and that's when you get frustrated that's when you get down on yourself that's when you're like what's the point of doing something good for me tomorrow like i already screwed up today so i'm just like not even going to do anything at all you have to be able to give yourself those grace periods and i was talking about in our healthy habits challenge we have an instagram group and i i was putting in there on monday that i was feeling frustrated with myself because i went out to eat twice including cold stone it was my friend's birthday but i was like i normally don't really go out to eat all that much and then i did it two times in one day and i had ice cream which is sugar and i've been trying to cut back on sugar and i was like but i'm not gonna let myself get frustrated because it's just one day that was an off day and i can pick it back up tomorrow or if i don't pick it back up tomorrow fine just pick it back up on Wednesday. just don't go those more than two days of your bad habits and that just helps me not put so much pressure on myself and it's it's kind of like a restart but I, it, it's just it's something that has helped me so much not get in my own head and not get too down on myself not blame myself and also not just go totally off the rails like that sort of routine for me has helped me so much this next question was how did you learn about money specifically how to find legit sources of info love you thank you love you um, i love all the questions about money it makes me it makes me want to do another video focused on this which is funny too because i am trying to do a healthy habits calendar which is a free download on by samantha march i want to do them every other month so i did january i did march and i was thinking about may and may's is going to be a, it's i even i have it on the list <laughs> with my team may money calendar so that free download will be coming in the month of may which i'm really excited about but how did i learn about money i started reading books um nicole lapin was i will find some uh, specifically and put them in the description box because I'm probably not gonna be able to think of everything off the top of my head um, Nicole Lappin has some books that I read and she had a podcast that I don't think is out anymore but her podcast I listened to and it talked a lot about like retirement um, oh what is the book like rich mm, I'm gonna leave them I'm gonna leave them in the description box but that book was where I learned about retirement accounts because I had no idea when I went from traditional employment to self-employment I rolled over my 401k and thought good job I didn't realize that when you roll over your 401k you have to then invest the money somewhere I, like I thought you just rolled over your money and you were like good to go so my money was sitting in this retirement account for years not growing not doing anything because I didn't realize I had to be doing something with it and it wasn't until I read this book something about rich women <laughs> uh, it wasn't until I read that book that I realized my mistake and he said one of the most common mistakes I see is this and I was like that's me and I mentioned this in my financial mistakes video on my main channel and I had so many comments of people saying you didn't know that either until you watched my video and I was like at least I helped somebody <laughs> at least I helped somebody with this video um, there's just to me there's just not enough education around financials and what really what financials actually really mean and what they can do and how much that they can affect i had no idea about a high yield savings account until i until i started listening to podcasts that's when i got my high yield savings account with the marcus goldman and now i just had a regular savings account at my bank where i was making like pennies every single month now i'm making hundreds of dollars in interest every single month on my money and my friend who lives here she was just asking me about it the other day like what do you have for a savings account and I told her and I said, what do you have? And she said, just one at my bank. So I sent her the link to Marcus Goldman. I was like, get yourself, even if it's not this one, it doesn't matter. Like get, just get yourself a high yield savings account. Um, so books, podcasts, YouTube videos, that's really how I learned. And I mean, it was all through self learning. It takes a lot of time. It took a lot of energy. I made mistakes. I lost money. Um, but I knew that I had to be able to turn around my financial situation and that came with being educated on financials and everything that I didn't learn in school and I didn't learn, um, you know, coming from like family or friends, like I had to take that on and learn it myself and I was very adamant that I was going to. So I will link some further resources in my description box. This question is about Aries. How did you both decide who would keep Aries? So in my divorce, um, my partner and I got Aries together and, um, uh, we're, we used to live in Iowa and we moved to Las Vegas. So obviously one of us had to um, be able to, to take Aries with and to be quite honest, there just really there there was no there was just no discussion 
about it. So, and my ex-husband had a very amicable split, which I am so incredibly grateful for. I hear such horror stories about divorce, but truly, um, you know, he helped me pack up my moving truck that came. It was like two weeks before I moved out to Las Vegas. I had like a pod get dropped off and he, it was just me and him and we packed the whole thing together. And I had just put Aries belongings in the pile and that, that was it. <laughs> that was it. But uh, yeah, I needed my dog here with me. I needed my queen. I needed my best friend. This so. question is, have you wanted to change the cover of your book since it's your wedding photo? So my fourth novel is Up To I Do and it's a book about a girl getting married. It's not my wedding. It's about like a socialite getting married to like another very rich man. So absolutely nothing to do with my wedding. Um, but I just always knew that I wanted to write a book about a girl getting married and it came out, A Questionable Friendship was my third book, which came out right after my wedding. I think Up To I Do came out the year prior, the year following my wedding. Um, but I just thought how fun would it be to put my own picture on the cover? So our actual wedding photo is the cover. So after the divorce, I was getting some questions about that book and if I was going to change the cover, but I'm not, um, you know, I, I don't regret getting married. I don't, I, I don't regret 15 years with my ex. I have so many good, positive memories. There was so much good before there was, you know, the bad at the end. And I truly, I, I don't mind it. Like when people buy the book and I sign it and I send it out, it's not painful to me. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't make me want to like throw the book or anything like that. Um, because I still, I, I have great memories tied to it. So. At, at this moment in time, I, I don't have any plans to change the cover. I think it's a it's a beautiful photo and it's a special memory. This says, what do you do when you are having an off mental health day? I think that's a great question because um, again, on my main channel and just on my social media, since I've started it, I have been very open about mental health struggles, about anxiety, about depression. And to me, talking about mental health has been the thing that has connected me with my audience the absolute most. Um, and I think it is very special. It's definitely very challenging to talk about mental health, especially when you're not in a great place. Um, but I have seen the importance of speaking out with my, my audience and, and with my community. So what I really had to learn is I was, I used to be someone who was very much like no days off. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling. doesn't matter if I'm sick. doesn't matter if I'm depressed. Um, I have to just do whatever I have to do to keep going. Like I always have that, you know, I don't come from like a wealthy background or anything. Um, and I just, I think I'll always have that hustle mentality no matter what success looks like for me now or in, in the future. I used to feel like I can't have a day off, but I think it was actually COVID <laughs> uh, that really taught me what it means to take care of yourself. And when you aren't feeling well, to be able to accept that and to be able to have a day where you're like, you know what, today I am going to lay in bed and today I am just gonna watch shows or read a book and I'm not gonna open up my computer and I'm not gonna spend time on my phone getting lost in social media, which sometimes isn't great for me. Um, and it's just being able to accept that I need to take care of my mind and myself first. Obviously there's times where it's like multiple days of, of not feeling well, which I, I don't particularly have that ability to take several days off at a time. So you do have to kind of figure it out. But I think I noticed during COVID of, of when I wasn't feeling well, I was going through fertility treatments at this time. So like my body was just going through a lot. My mind was going through a lot that when I actually allowed myself to take that day to say like, this day is going to be a wash. <laughs> You're just going to walk with your dog and lay in bed and read a book. It was almost like that telling myself, Hey, today, sure but tomorrow you'll pick it back up. I felt like less stress on it. There's times too where I get, because of my hormone imbalance, I struggle with fatigue a lot. And you know, just the other day, it was like five o'clock and I was like, I'm so exhausted. I still have a full night of work that I have to do. I was like, I'm gonna go lay down for an hour. And I set my timer for one hour and I was like, if I can sleep, great. If not, I'm just going to rest. I'm not going to be on my computer. I'm not going to be on my phone. Even if I'm just staring at the ceiling or staring outside or looking in, at my dog, I'm giving myself one hour and then I will reset and start again. 
and I just feel like that helps me so much because I don't feel stressed. I'm not beating myself up over it. I'm giving myself a timeline of an hour, three hours, a day, a night, whatever it may be. Give yourself grace and then pick back up. Um, there's some more questions about divorce. Like how long did you think about divorce? Um, what made you divorce your husband? Would you ever get remarried? You know, how long, like the divorce for me is not, it was not like a quick process. I remember seeing some things online of like, I just decided to get divorced and I just decided to move to Las Vegas, which I was like, what? Um, because it actually took a very, like it took years to be able to get there. Um, there was a lot that I was trying to do, like to set myself up financially to make sure that I would be okay on my own. And that sort of thing so it actually took several years to get there now would i ever get remarried at this point in time i i just don't think so i'm not interested even in like relationships at this moment dating um i'm solely focused on myself my health my career and my dog and i just like can't be bothered <laughs> having to like pour into someone else right now i don't know i i mean never say never of course just at this time in my life i just don't really see it happening this next question is what inspires you and what gives you motivation every day uh honestly so i have a gratitude journal that i sell on my website as well and it's also on amazon and there's a little box that says what inspired you today and it's almost every single day what inspires me is all of you when i you know, I asked for, for a Q&A on my main Instagram, not the brand Instagram, and I just thought, I was like, I should put in there, you know, specifically, this is for my second channel, and I was like, I should specifically say, like, do you have questions on healthy habits, and I was like, I just think I'm going to get a lot of questions about, like, beauty and makeup and, like, Ulta and Sephora, and these are, like, I haven't skipped a question yet, these are the questions that people want to know. Um, when I get messages and DMs from people that are interested in their health and that are interested in their financial situation and they're interested in trying to live their best lives and making changes, that's what inspires me and that's the community that I want to build. Um, it's the community I've been wanting to build through all of these years because I think it's so special, especially when women work together to build each other up, to give each other knowledge. And that's just a very small footprint of what I have wanted to do online. So it's just, it's so many of you. I opened my first community challenge recently and I was so nervous about it and I didn't know if anyone would want to join or do it. And we had 20 people sign up right away. And everyone who signed up that are just motivated and inspired to stay on track with their goals and to make better changes and to find new routines and live a healthier lifestyle. It inspires me so much going on the Instagram group chat and seeing people create their own fitness challenge together with like their Apple watches and it just, it brings me so much joy. So that's what continues to inspire me. How do you know when to walk away? I'm always terrified of leaving too soon. I'm always terrified of leaving too soon. You know, that's a question that I get a lot as well, or I have people say like, what was your sign to get a divorce? What was your sign to leave? Um, and one thing that I usually say is if you're looking for a sign, that's probably your sign. Um, of course, I never wanna tell anybody what to do and just getting a question, you know, sometimes I don't have any background, I don't have any context, I'm not a therapist or you know anything like that so i it, it's hard for me to be able to to give advice but that's one thing that i think i wish i would have realized sooner because it was something that i said for so long like well if i get this sign or if this happens or, or whatnot and i think all of that was me telling myself what i already knew it was just i didn't want to believe it for a long time divorce is really hard it's really scary it's terrifying to start over. Um, you know, I had to do it publicly and got pretty crucified on the internet for it. And I'm still in therapy <laughs> for that. It's definitely challenging. How do you reward but... yourself when you achieve a goal? And if so, what do you do by give yourself? I do think rewarding yourself is really important. Um, and I think not even just by something like materialistic or like 
eating a favorite food or something i think it's really important to reward yourself internally i do a lot of journaling and i make sure to write down like my wins when i achieve something when i did something good um and to applaud myself i think especially as women we for whatever reason have been ingrained to like not cheer ourselves on and to not pat ourselves on the back and like I, I don't understand that because we deal with so much and we have so much already stacked against us that when we can have a win I think it's something to be achieved and um, you know celebrating my other girlfriend's wins I always think is so important but there are certain things too um, like a lot of times when I publish a book I like to buy something that will make me remember that that's like I'm doing it because I published that book. So sometimes it's like a purse or a pair of shoes, something along those lines. Um, sometimes it's like treating myself to a restaurant that I've always wanted to go to. But I definitely think rewarding yourself is so important. I always put that on my healthy habits calendar. This next question is, what's a big lesson you learned by starting your own business? Um, truly just the behind the scenes and how much really goes into it from learning about like copyright and trademarks that was very eye-opening to me um, just all of the small costs that goes into running a business from getting a business license renewing a business license everyone that you have to have from again I have a copyright lawyer I have a business lawyer I have the CPA um, everything that you have to do to try to protect yourself um you know getting an llc deciding if you want an s corp if you want to pay yourself are you having payroll there's absolutely so much that goes into it so i know a lot of businesses are popping up especially when it comes like beauty sometimes people are like oh just another business just another business it's so hard and there's so much that has to go into launching your own business it's also so windy in las vegas if you can hear that las vegas is the windy city okay i'm filming by a window uh, this next one is what's your favorite healthy recipe that feels decadent but isn't that's a great question so i've definitely tried to be changing up my diet less sugar more vegetables all of those things i feel like one thing i haven't dabbled in a lot with yet is dessert um maybe i think maybe because it just feels like kind of overwhelming to me but one thing that i do make i don't know if i'd say that these are decadent but they're my like go-to dessert is i slice bananas and i have these little mini muffin sheets and i put the banana slice in each one and then i top it with some almond butter and then i melt chocolate chips and coconut oil so i melt them and then i pour them on top and it's like a better for you version of like a Reese's peanut butter cup <laughs> and I think they're really good you just put them in the freezer you wait till they're frozen and then you just eat them as you please I think that they're great and when I find myself craving sugar or wanting something sweet that's what that's what I go to the brand Lily's has um is it no sugar I think it's no sugar chocolate chips no refined sugar chocolate chips so that feels a little bit decadent sometimes i just eat like a handful of chocolate chips if i'm like having that sugar craving so i don't go eat ice cream instead um but i do i love okay. those i feel like i've been here for a while and i'm kind of losing the light so i'm getting closer closer and closer to my camera uh what is considered a healthy habit but it didn't work for you oh that's a good question um you know I don't know if I would say this is like a healthy habit, but something that didn't work for me that works for a lot of people and that I see recommended a lot is weightlifting or like heavy lifting. And that was something I tried to do. I've always been more into like the Pilates, the yoga. Again, I fell in love with Pilates first. I had a yoga Instagram for a while. Walks with my dog. I would have like light dumbbells at home that I would use, but I was never really like a gym girl. And then I moved to Las Vegas, the apartment complex has a nice gym with, you know, a bunch of weights and stations and everything. And I would see on TikTok, all these women with these strong bodies. And I was like, I've always been very thin. And sometimes like looking in photos, I would describe myself as frail, even though I've tried to eat well. And at times I haven't had the healthiest eating habits of like, I eat too much, but um, you know, we're just genetically, like my family has been, has been very thin, but sometimes I didn't really love that look. And I think especially coming off a divorce, I wanted to feel like I had a strong mind and a strong body. 
So I thought, let me try this weightlifting. Also around this time, I had gotten back on birth control. I had been off birth control. I was in fertility treatments with my ex-husband and then I got back on birth control. I had just moved. I was obviously very stressed with my move and starting over. I'd launched my own business. All of that is very stressful. And then I also started weightlifting and within three months, I gained over 30 pounds. I was constantly tired. My brain fog was severe. Um, I was bloated all of the time. I started throwing up when I was eating because my stomach was so full, I wasn't able to keep anything down. And I was able to do some lab work. I was able to learn that my cortisol levels were off the charts high. So when I was doing something like heavy lifting, that was only putting more stress on my body. And I was also going to the gym for like one to two hours because I had started gaining weight. So I thought, well, I just need to work out more. And I was doing that, but all that was doing was putting my body in like a perpetual state of stress, which was just doing every, like it was just backfiring on me. So that was something really interesting to learn. And I think that's what got me really interested in learning about like hormone health as well and how different it is for everybody. And there's some people that can do it because they don't, aren't dealing with a hormone imbalance. They aren't dealing with PCOS and it works great for them. But for me, I went back to yoga, cardio, walking, and lighter intensity workouts and cycle syncing. And that's been a lot better for me. Uh, what did you study in university and why? So I was actually a travel and hospitality major uh, when I got my associate's degree. I always loved traveling, so I thought that sounded like a fun major, and it was. We got to go to Amsterdam and Jamaica, plan both the trips, and then we got to go on them. And then my uh, bachelor's degree is in business and entrepreneurship because I knew that I always wanted to run my own business one day. I just didn't know what, but here we are, business owner. Uh, how have you developed your self-confidence through the last few years? I'm struggling. Confidence is something I've always struggled with and I think it will continue to always be something that I struggle with, if I can speak frankly. I think especially in today's world of social media, we have so much comparison going on out there. Um, but also we just have so much access to everybody now and it feels like no matter what people want to be upset or bring you down for whatever reason and um, you know I love social media and it's given me this career, it's given me a community, it's given me a way to reach more people with my stories and with what makes me passionate but there's definitely a very dark side to it as well and I think that will always play into self-confidence. I think of the younger generation that have only grew up with social media and I just wonder about them and how they'll be because I was like at least I could have like a normal childhood and not have to be constantly critiqued if I'm posting things online or what people are saying to me or cyberbullying. Um, I, I, I definitely I think it's a struggle if anyone has self-confidence tips like honestly like I'm all about them I do a lot of therapy <laughs> I do a lot of inner work I do a lot of journaling I do a lot of reflection I've definitely tried to be very aware of who I surround myself by and by people that want to lift one another up but also want to have engaging conversations that lift our confidence every time we talk to each other even if it's not just not just us just like patting each other on the back the whole time, be like, no, you're a great girl, you're a great girl. Talking through problems, talking through issues, and that helps build your confidence. You know, one of my friends the other day was struggling with like a work thing. So me and another friend were talking to her about it and hopefully being able to help bring her confidence to take that into, in, into her job. So that is something I think is really important too, but I'm always down to hear more tips. How have you been dealing with anxiety about health stuff in the last years? I feel like I my anxiety is definitely very high when it comes to health. I'm so aware now of literally everything that I'm doing. Like I'm trying to change my laundry detergent at this point and remove as many toxins as I can from my household. And sometimes I think I get pretty overwhelmed and that's why I try to take things in really small increments and I start it with changing my exercise and you know stopping the lifting going back to what I was used to and I started slowly making changes in my diet and as I'm getting a hold of that now I'm switching to looking at household products and what I can switch instead of trying to do too much at one time I'm always really in favor of breaking down the goals really small breaking down anything that you can to make it more small and manageable so you can get a handle on something and then you can move to the next thing and I try to keep my anxiety under control that way <laughs> but it's hard it's a it's oh it's always a work in progress it is always a work in progress uh, question is how to advocate for yourself with feminine issues to find the issue 
being told it's just you so yeah that was something when i started going around to doctors when i wasn't feeling well being told it's because you're in your 30s it's because you're a woman this is just what you have to deal with and i just truly like i i just refused to accept it so what i started doing was i started talking because I was keeping my health problems to myself for a long time because I was blaming myself first. And I thought it's because you're eating like crap. It's because you're drinking too much or having too much Starbucks. It's because um, you're not working out enough. That's why I started going to the gym for an hour, two hours and lifting insane heavy weights because I was like, you're not doing enough. Um, I blamed it all on myself. And then hearing doctors, hearing medical professionals say like, well, this is just what happens. I mean, that's very confusing in your mind to hear. Um, but what I did was I started talking and I started talking to my friends and eventually I had someone say, that really doesn't sound right and it sounds like what my ex-wife went through and here's her doctor. And I started working with a naturopathic doctor who immediately ordered labs for me and we, w we were able to figure out what was going on. I couldn't even get a medical doctor to order a lab for me. And that was when I really started to understand what was going on, understand my hormones, understand adrenal PCOS, and to be able to move forward from there. And that was why I wanted to then take to the internet to start sharing my story. And, you know, hearing so many people in the comment sections when I first started talking about it was really overwhelming because it made me realize how big of an issue there is with healthcare and, and women and how we are just turned away and told it's just normal. And I am not disagreeing with the fact that as you get older, your hormones change, but it doesn't have to just be like, okay, now you're out to dry. What can we do differently? Even learning about something like cycle syncing and how the female hormones fluctuate through 28 days and when this hormone rises and when this lowers and all of that has been so interesting and something that I feel is such a shame that is not taught more openly and taught with pride. Women can't be proud of our bodies. Like we have to be embarrassed by something like getting a period every single month or we have to be talked down to. I will never ever forget. I don't know if anyone who's, if you're with me on this channel, but let me just say two words, best buy. <laughs> I will never ever forget the humiliation of being in a Best Buy and having an employee who thought I had already walked away, a male employee tell another male employee that I must have just been on my period because I was upset. I will never forget that. I was humiliated <laughs> and furious. So it's just, we have to advocate for ourselves, talking to one another, helping each other out. It, it, goes, it goes so far. And then I'm going to wrap it up with this last question. Do you think Vegas is your permanent home? And do you, do you see yourself marrying again? I do think Vegas will be my home at least for the next long while. I am looking into buying a house next year for Aries and I, which I'm really excited for. It's been a wonderful experience at this complex and meeting people and kind of feeling like I'm back at college again or like I'm on the show Friends or <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> something like that. Um, it's been great, but I really would like to buy a house here and yeah, I, pl I, I don't have anywhere else that I want to go right now. So I think Vegas will be my home for a very long time and probably not on the remarrying, but you never know. You never know. Someone may come along that Aries and I both approve of. But speaking of that, I do actually, I'm going out tonight in Las Vegas for a little influencer event, which I'm really looking forward to. So I got to get changed and head over to that. But thank you so much to everyone who asked questions. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A on this channel. If there's any other videos you would like to see from me over here on healthy habits, finances, routines, goals, goal setting, anything like that, please just let me know in the comments and I'm so happy to make it because this is truly where my passion is. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.